Welcome back. Today's lecture will introduce Lyapunov barrier functions to model reference adaptive control. Basically, we will constrain the difference between the system state X and the reference model state XR by a user-defined parameter. This is very important to prevent system state X to diverge from XR during the learning phase of the adaptive controller. So let's get, um, let's start. All right, so we are going to look at this system, x that equals ax plus bu plus the uncertainty. Um, today's lecture will focus on adaptive control, and the next lecture will focus on neuroadaptive control. Um, I am not going to consider lambda. You can easily handle it as well using the um, previous material on this adaptive control and learning series. And actually, the version with lambda is on this paper, and why, but I'm going to show the results of this paper. All right, here is the control signal, minus K1x, K2c. We covered in the previous lectures how they should be selected. This is the estimation of the um, unknown weights. We know the basis function. We are looking at structured uncertainty case. When you close the loop with this control signal, you have x that equals to ar, x, br, c, c is the command, and this is the estimation error, double tilde, multiplied by the basis function. We choose k1 such that ar is her width, and br gives some uh, tracking, um, makes meet some um, tracking requirements through the selection of k2. Again, those points were covered in the previous lectures. And here is the reference model that we have. And now we have the X minus XR or the error signal. So this error signal, right, during the learning phase uh, can grow, but we know that eventually we can design a weight update law such that error goes to zero. So our goal is the following. With the standard parameter update law, this is gamma is a positive adaptation gain, error can be large, especially during the learning phase of the adaptive controller or initial transients when you turn it on. And our goal is to enforce a constraint to this error to achieve safety to guarantee that, to guarantee a worst case performance error by a user-defined function. As this being said, uh, let's see if I covered everything here, as you know, P metrics positive definite satisfying this Lyapunov equation for a given positive definite matrix R. All right, so um, I am going to introduce set theoretic adaptive control, which is predicated on barrier functions. So let me first define a, a barrier function. I am defining this norm, weighted Euclidean norm, to be like this. And I am saying that this phi is a barrier function defined on the set d epsilon. This d epsilon is the set such that e lives between zero and user-defined constant epsilon if the following statements hold. The first of all, um, when error is uh, in p norm of the error is zero, then this phi function is zero. If this p norm of the error belonging to this set and this not equal to zero, then we have a positive definite phi. If we ap approach to the boundary of this set, this phi approaches the infinity. This needs to be uh, continuously differentiable on this d e. And on this d e set, basically d derivative of this uh, barrier function, which is defined like this, I am going to use this in the proof, is positive. Well, we have five conditions, but that's okay. I can give you just one example that satisfies all these five conditions. Here is one of them. If you select function like this, and it is d derivative is defined like that, you can easily check it satisfies all these five constraints. And how this function and its d derivative looking like this on this plot, depending on uh, p norm of the error, basically starting from the zero containing the origin, this function grows like this. This is the phi function. And its d derivative is always positive, and it also grows like that. So this one 
along with this one satisfies all these five constraints so we can move on all right so x dot dynamic satisfying this and uh, this was our reference model so let's take a time derivative of e we end up having this e dot dynamics we did this several times up to here nothing is different now i would like to select initial condition of a e zero p norm of the e zero to be less than epsilon so this is an assumption okay this is must be met um, for cases if there is some uncertainty in the knowledge of x zero and let's say you are implementing this uh, wait until system is settles such that you can more confidently read x zero and select x r zero to be somewhere close to x zero um, so don't forget this assumption needs to be made um, then let's consider this um, energy function containing the Lyapunov barrier function that we just defined plus the weight estimation error now I am differentiating it now we need to take derivative of this phi function so I am writing this derivative as d phi over dE transpose p dE transpose p dt this is exactly where we are using d, phi d, d derivative of this Lyapunov barrier function, and this is standard to e transpose p e dot. And you, when you insert e dot here, you can easily come up with this expression. And the derivative of the second term is just in here. Now in the next step, I am combining all these terms. These are coming from here, and this comes from here. Now, I am going to focus on these two terms. First of all, I am going to do a trick here. This is a scalar, right? A transpose B is a scalar. And I use this trace property. I can write it as B A transpose. So calling this as R A transpose, calling this as B, basically B comes here and A transpose coming there. Exactly, I am using this so that I can put this term inside the trace operator. The second term is already in the traced operator, so I am writing it like this. So if you look at this blue term, they are both multiplied by W tilde W tilde. So if you select W hat dot exactly like this, then they will cancel out. And here you go. Here is your new parameter update law, which is looking exactly like the previous standard weight update law, but now it has this phi d function, the derivative of the Lyapunov barrier function. So uh, note that this is always positive, right? So the remaining term is this. I am going to re rewrite it as distribute E as like this, like that. Um, this is scalar, right? I am taking the transpose of a scalar, which is itself, so that I can combine these terms like this. Here, I can use the Lyapunov equation. So we have this. Um, since this is always positive definite, this is less than or equal to zero, meaning that error and the W tilde estimate are bounded. All right, so boundedness of E and W tilde is guaranteed. And note that since error is bounded, neither phi nor its phi d derivative are unbounded, right? Error bounded means uh, basically this, this function phi d cannot diverge to infinity since uh, it is inside the Lyapunov function. All right, so the level sets of V denoted by omega are compact and invariant. Now, to this end, let um, Q be the set of all points in omega such that V dot equals to zero. So V dot equals to zero, basically since this is positive, when error equals to zero. It now follows that all solution approach, oh, before that, since V D is zero, this is what I just told you, this implies that Q contains um, just E equals to zero. It now follows that all solutions approach the largest invariant set M in Q. Well, this concludes the proof since M is composed of all points such that E equals to zero. And I basically used here an invariance like result to summarize what we accomplished is that 
if you start inside this set this shouldn't be zero um, let me correct it here this should be epsilon if you start if your initial error is contained in the epsilon set then um, you are guaranteed to stay on that set for all time sorry for the second typo here you are guaranteed to stay on that set for all time with the new parameter update low plus error goes to zero so here basically this is your worst case right this is your worst case performance denoted by epsilon and you are choosing the epsilon so Lyapunov barrier functions buys you you know allows you to assign a worst case performance bound to your adaptive controller which is great um, i am not in this video going to show you a, a matlab uh, code an example because in the next video i am going to um, show, give, give a code example for the neuro adaptive case which will be an interesting example so you can you know since regular adaptive control is a special case of neuro adaptive control you can just kill the projection operator of the leakage type of terms you can use the code in the next video if um, for the content that i just showed you instead i would like to show you an experimental result of set theoretic model reference adaptive control from this paper with my former uh, phd student Esan Arabi. all right so here this um, aerospace system from quanser has four states um, theta is the pitch angle and uh, phi is the um, roll angle and these angles are provided through sensors and their derivatives are estimated and our control inputs are the uh, pitch angle motor voltage vp and the roll angle motor voltage vz and we would like to regulate theta and phi these two angles uh, with safety so um, with barrier functions and here are the results experimental results um, this is the command for the uh, roll angle this is the reference uh, state of the roll angle and this is the actual roll angle same true for the uh, pitch angle command blue itself red is the reference model version here are the control voltages and we set in this experiment epsilon to 0.4 whatever happens we don't want this p norm of the error not to exit epsilon and as you see when you are about to approach to this epsilon this effective adaptation gain in gamma multiplied by phi d increases to maintain safety that we cannot pass here and then once you are going away once error p, p norm of the error moves away from this epsilon threshold the worst case performance bound then uh, this effective learning uh, rate gets um, smaller and smaller and here are the weight update estimates so basically here this adjust itself to always ensure that you are not violating your safety constraint uh, through the selection of epsilon and you may ask in practice for different systems how can you select epsilon well um it depends on your system's parameter as well as the this um, EP norm of the error. So considering, for example, let's say you have P and V states, position and velocity, then you can consider the maximum and minimum uh, position uh, deviations as well as the velocity. And you need to do a little bit tuning, sometimes optimization in the selection process of this epsilon and before i conclude i would like to also cover um and a generalization of the material that i just covered right so let's look at here this is our reference um state x less thing scalar and here is the let's say actual state what i covered in this video in this lecture allows you such that you know you are all your basically error x minus xr is always guaranteed to uh, stay on this d epsilon set so we have covered how to enforce a constraint epsilon to uh, keep p norm of the error there 
So you can also make this a time varying bond to achieve a precise performance um, like, like this, right? You start large, then you can narrow it gradually to more precisely make your system tracked uh, a, a given command. So you can make this the epsilon set to shrink. You can also use this, right? Initially, let's say your initial E0, due to maybe measurement noise is large, you can start from a larger set, then you converge to a smaller D epsilon set. Basically, the paper on the right here uh, also covers how to enforce a time varying bound to error. I am not planning to cover it right now on this video, but if you are interested, you can download and read this paper, which, which extends um, constant Lupino barrier function to a uh, time varying like one. And again, thank you. Um, if you like, subscribe, um, leave comments. Um, I am trying to answer every question on this channel. Take care.